First of all, Jeremy Scahill was uh, on uh, the program Up With Chris Hayes on MSNBC over the weekend, and he made some very controversial remarks about the drone program. Let's watch. If, if someone goes into a shopping mall in pursuit of one of their enemies and opens fire on, on a crowd of people and guns down a bunch of innocent people in a shopping mall, they've murdered those people. Um, if, when, when the Obama administration sets a policy where patterns of life are enough of a green light to drop missiles on people or to use, uh, you know, to, to, to send in AC-130s to spray them down. Um, but that wasn't I, the case I, I, here. You're well, talking about well, a targeted well, person uh, here. No, 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 no. That's not, but I'm, I'm, if you go to the village of Al-Majla in Yemen, uh, where I was, and you see the unexploded cluster bombs, and you have the list and, and photographic evidence, as I do, of the women and children that represented the vast majority of the deaths in, a, in this first strike that Obama authorized on Yemen, those people were murdered by President Obama on his orders because there was believed to be someone from al-Qaeda in that area. There's only one person that's been identified that had any connection to al-Qaeda there. And, and 21 women and 14 children were killed in that strike. And the U.S. tried to cover it up and say it was a Yemeni strike. And we know from the WikiLeaks cables that David Petraeus conspired with the president of Yemen to lie to the world about who did that bombing. It's murder. when you It's mass murder. When you say we are going to bomb this area because we believe a terrorist is there and you know that women and children are in the area, the United States has an obligation to not bomb that area if they believe that women and children are there. That, that, I'm sorry, that's murder. The... Now, is it murder? Look, uh, we have had so-called collateral damage throughout uh, a lot of our wars, if not almost all of our wars, obviously. Uh, we killed civilians in World War II, whether it was the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings or the fire bombing of Dresden, etc. So there's been a lot of civilian casualties and some done completely on purpose. If cops did bomb a mall and they were going after a bad guy and they killed women and children in the process, would that be called murder? Well, is it a different standard if you're in the middle of a war? On the other hand, uh, Jeremy could rightfully say, are we in the middle of a war? We're doing this in Yemen and Pakistan where we have no declared war. And I'm not sure that, you know, we'd have to see what a jury says on that mall bombing and what the circumstances of it are. So it is a very, very tough question as to what you call it. It is not tough in terms of whether you do it or not. If I was the president of the United States and they said, all right, no big deal, we're just going to kill 35 civilians, including women and children, and we're going to take out one al-Qaeda guy, I would say that is not an equation I'm in favor of. And I was hoping that we would have a progressive president who would agree with that. Apparently, we do not. The bombings continue. So over the last two weeks, we've had six drone uh, attacks in Pakistan alone. Over the weekend, three different ones. Now the foreign ministry of Pakistan is calling them, quote, illegal, which is a strong word, and saying it violates their sovereignty, which is almost certainly true. Obviously, it violates their sovereignty if they are not in favor of it. Some, of course, believe that they tacitly approve those. By calling things illegal in public, they are seeming, seeming to indicate that we no longer tacitly approve of these. Now, uh, four missiles were fired at the village of Mana Ragzai in southern Waziristan over the weekend. Twelve people killed. In the three bombings overall, 27 people killed. How many of those were actually terrorists, militants? It is entirely unclear. One thing that is clear is that we have targeted civilians, including it, what is known as a double tap, which is when uh, there is a bombing, if people go to help, first responders, uh, you do a double tap and you kill those guys. Or you do a double tap at a funeral. When they go bury the guy you killed with a drone strike, you do a drone strike on the funeral. This double tap is a term that was coined apparently to describe what Hamas did in some of their suicide bombings. So we'll get back to that in a second. So have we in fact done that though here in the United States? The answer seems to be a definitive yes. The Bureau of Investigative Journalism says that the CIA's drone campaign in Pakistan has killed dozens of civilians who had gone to help rescue victims or were attending funerals. New York Times further describes that same report saying at least 50 civilians had been killed in follow-up strikes after they rushed to help those hit by drone-fired missile. And uh, furthermore, says the Bureau counted more than 20 other civilians killed in strikes on funerals. You know, Glenn Greenwald describes this as, you know, to paraphrase him, kind of comic book evil. You know, if someone did this in a movie, they'd be like the mafia boss going to kill uh, people at a funeral, and it would seem despicable, or an evil, villainous king, etc. In fact, I found out today the mafia 
has an unwritten rule that you don't do this at funerals. Even the mafia has that rule, and we will not abide by it. Now, it's not just something we've done in the past, it's what we did this weekend. As The Guardian points out, at the time of the attack, this is the second attack uh, on the, this one struck the funeral of one of the guys who was being married. Uh, quote, at the time of the attack, suspected militants had gathered to offer condolences to the brother of a militant commander killed during another U.S. unmanned drone attack on Saturday. The brother was one of those who died in the Sunday morning attack. The Pakistani official said two of the dead were foreigners and the rest were Pakistani. Now, when you talk about foreigners inside Pakistan, oftentimes that is all, uh, foreign fighters. That might be connected to Al-Qaeda. Is it? Who knows? Nobody knows. How about the brother of the so-called militant? It, was he on any list? Not as far as we know. It appears that he might be a civilian. But you know what? He made the mistake of attending his brother's funeral. How dare he? Who else among those 12 killed in that particular strike were civilians? No one knows. No one counts. In fact, the official position of the Obama government is if you are a military-aged male in a strike zone, you are assumed to be guilty. You're assumed to be a militant. By the way, military age just means if you're an adult male in a place we've decided to bomb, we assume you're guilty unless someone proves you innocent after you die. Okay, so that's how we count civilians. Now, is that problematic? Is that a huge problem? No matter what you call it, whether you call it murder or not, absolutely. In fact, where do we get this? Well, we got this idea of the so-called double tap from other terrorists. The FBI described it this way. Uh, this is in a news story about the FBI warning about secondary explosive devices in Iraq. Quote, terrorists may use secondary explosive devices to kill and injure emergency personnel responding to an initial attack. The FBI again warned US law enforcement agencies. Now they're warning about this you know, locally here in the US. They certainly warned about it in Iraq as well because they saw that that was happening, some of the attacks in Iraq. In fact, they were right to warn about it here locally because it's happened before. Uh, the domestic terrorist uh, Eric Rudolph did it in his 1998 bombing of a uh, woman's clinic. He also did it at the Northside Family Planning Services in 1997. Over and over again, he would do what was called a double tap. First bomb, when police respond, first responders, rescuers respond, he explodes a larger second bomb. Now, uh, they didn't just do it in Iraq, they didn't just do it uh, here in the US uh, with Eric Rudolph, but Hamas apparently also did it. Now, this is what a 2007 Homeland Security report on terrorism says about Hamas. Quote, a favorite tactic of, of Hamas, the double tap, a device is set off and when police and other first responders arrive, a second larger device is set off to inflict more casualties and spread panic. Now, when Hamas does it, we call it terrorism. When we do it, we said, hey, we just killed militants. Were they actual militants? No, we know we've killed civilians. The report explains, killed civilians over and over again in these double taps. No, no, but we're not terrorists, we're not murderers, because we're the good guys, by definition. Now, what do you call it? Well, that's up to you. But what we're doing is absolutely clear. And it's something so heinous that we described as terrorism before, something so heinous, the mafia won't even do it.